Good Sangpo and a very warm welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. I'm Shirak Zangmo. Our top stories this week. Thousands received Dag Marwang from His Holiness to Jaehempo last Sunday at the annual Milam Chenmo in Hinsi. Bhutan and India signed the Intergovernmental Agreement for the construction of four new hydropower projects. And the Election Commission of Bhutan spent over 426 million Yultram for the 2013 parliamentary elections, including the by-election for Nano Shuma constituency. The annual Melam Chenmat also in Lhunsi concluded last Sunday with Dagmar Wong from His Holiness the Jehempo. Thousands of devotees from far and near gathered to receive the blessing. People gathered at Namdruling Genzin Drasang to receive Dagmar Wong from His Holiness the Jehempo. Devotees from as far as Thimpu, Tashikang, Tashiangsi and Mongar attended the Melam Chenmo and received Dagmar Wong. A Guru Thongdur was also unfurled for the devotees. The six-day religious ceremony was also an opportunity for a BRICS business. The Malam Chanmo that began on Tuesday was presided over by His Holiness DJ Kempo. The annual Malam Chenmo in Lhansi was first conducted in 2009. His Holiness DJ Kempo will leave for Shimgang now to preside over the annual Malam Chenmo there. Kampal Fuchiche, Pemasuki for BBS News. The governments of Bhutan and India signed the Intergovernmental Agreement for the construction of four new hydropower projects. The Secretary of Economic Affairs Ministry, Sonam Tsring and Shuri P. K. Shina, Secretary, Minister of Power of India, signed the agreement. The four new hydropower projects are the 600 megawatt Kolungchu, the 570 megawatt Wachu, the 770 megawatt Jamkarchu, and the 180 megawatt Bunakachu projects. All four projects will be a joint venture between Bhutan and India. A public sector company, each from Bhutan and India, will execute the work. Duke Green Power Corporation will take up the venture from the Bhutanese side. I see that it is significant on two fronts. One, on the India-Bhutan friendship. And secondly, this event is significant, particularly on the hydropower sector development front. The four joint venture projects together would put in place a capacity of more than 2,000 megawatt project. And this is about 20% of our 10,000 megawatt initiative. The implementation of the 600 megawatt Kolungchu hydroelectric project is expected to begin soon, while the detailed project reports of Chamkar Chu 1 and Wanchu hydroelectric projects are expected to be cleared by April 2014. And the detailed project report of Bunakachu hydroelectric project has been cleared by the Indian government and the approval for grant financing of Duke Green Power Corporation's equity is under process. Sonam Chudin, BBS News. A two-week-long workshop on implementation and practice of gross national happiness and universal human values is underway at the Gedu College of Business Studies. Her Royal Highness Princess Chimi Yangzomongchuk greased the opening ceremony. Addressing the gathering, Her Royal Highness said, with modernization and development, more attention is being given on economic well-being and less on emotional happiness. Her Royal Highness added that development must serve human purpose, which is to create enabling conditions for people to pursue happiness. Because of the way development has been perceived, and in this race to gain material wealth, we are beginning to sacrifice everything, even quality time spent with our families. We are chasing after material things in hope that they will bring us happiness. Through advertisement, the corporate world tells us how to live and what to eat. By the time we realize that we've forgotten to live our lives, it is often too late. According to Dashapema Tile, Vice-Chancellor of the Royal University of Bhutan, 
The workshop will help train the faculty of the Royal University of Bhutan who will in turn deliver the Gross National Happiness and Universal Human Values program to the students. He said, since Universal Human Values program is consistent with the GNH values, the program has been introduced as a compulsory non-credited program in all the colleges from last year. This program, he said, is one of the means adopted by RUB in their endeavor of instilling GNH values in all the colleges under it. A major portion of the workshop is focused on understanding all dimensions and levels of human existence. It is to start a process of self-exploration in the participants. A total of about 119 participants, including 13 international participants and 73 RUB faculties, are taking part in the workshop. Compiled for Sonam Wangdi, Tandil Finso BBS News. The Election Commission of Bhutan spent over 426 million Nultram for the 2013 parliamentary elections, including the by-election for Nanong Shuma constituency. The amount is less than over 49 million Nultram of the cost incurred during the first parliamentary elections in 2008. The figures were released this morning. The Chief Election Commissioner explained that during the first parliamentary elections in 2008, electronic voting machines were bought, mock elections were held, and boundary delimitations were done. And all this cost the Commission over 476 million Niltrim. As for the last year's parliamentary elections, such things were not required. So the spending was less than what was spent in the first parliamentary elections. Over 426 million Niltrim was spent for the second parliamentary elections. Election Commission will also release a report for all the accounts of 2013 parliamentary elections after it is audited by the Royal Audit Authority. Bemal Hatton, BBS News. The World Health Organization Regional Director for Southeast Asia Region, Dr. Punam Ketrapal Singh, graced the opening of International Conference on Advancing Universal Health Coverage in Southeast Asia last Tuesday. In her statement, the Regional Director said that making universal health coverage at affordable rates was one of her main priorities. From her trips in the Southeast Asia Region, Dr. Kitrapal Singh discovered universal health coverage was something that everyone needed. According to her, out-of-pocket payments for health were high in Southeast Asia. Thus, addressing the conference in Paro yesterday, she said making universal health coverage at affordable rates was one of her main priorities in the region. There are four ways forward which have been identified. One is to do capacity building in countries so that countries can be assisted to make uh, national health policies, plans and strategies for universal health coverage. Second is to give technical support to the countries wherever it is needed. Third is that uh, countries of the region would look towards, WHO would be there to, as a convening agency to get all partners and stakeholders together. Since assuming office in February this year, this is her first visit to Bhutan. Dr. Singh also visited a basic health unit in Drugel in Paro. There, she found that access to health services in Bhutan are much better and said the government and the communities are active in ensuring good health care. Dr. Singh said WHO is fully committed to supporting Bhutan and the other countries to achieve this target. I have already committed this morning that whatever funding we have and what we can uh, spare, we would be helping first the countries of our region which need it most. Now Bhutan has, as you know, graduated to a middle uh, low-income country and because of that there is less donor support at the moment. Therefore my effort would be to see that I should be able to support Bhutan in every possible way to achieve um, universal health coverage. Bhutan is one of those countries which already has done a lot in this. Prior to this appointment, Dr. Khitrabal Singh served as the Deputy Regional Director of WHO Southeast Asia. She also worked for the World Bank as the Health Secretary for the state of Punjab in India. 
compiled for you get in Paru, Denzin Rapki, BBS News. To implement the Overseas Employment Programme effectively and efficiently, a regulation on Bhutanese Overseas Employment Agent 2013 was launched. The regulation is expected to serve as a legal guideline for the implementation of Overseas Employment Programme. The regulation was developed for a successful implementation of the Overseas Employment Programme. It is expected to ensure the safety and the interest of Bhutanese working overseas. The regulation which also states the procedures and standards of the Bhutanese Overseas Employment Agent ensures that agents implement the program accordingly. It was launched by the Labor and Human Resources Minister. We also want to ensure that the terms and conditions are best for our employers abroad in the host country and the also, government also is willing to spend on the skills and knowledge that they need when they go abroad. And also, we want to ensure that there is no brain drain. We also want to ensure that uh, the Bhutanese people go abroad only in those areas where there is no job available in the country or is not available to them. We'll also conduct some sort of research in the long run uh, where the Bhutanese people can work abroad. The minister also said if the Bhutanese working overseas have to repatriate it, the government will bear the cost. The regulation was developed as per the cabinet's approval in September last year. Meanwhile, the ministry also launched 8 minutes audio video on inculcating positive attitude towards job. Karmatsring, BVS News. Cops in Bumtang said it will be difficult to fully implement the local government rules and regulation 2012 due to lack of financial powers with them. The issue was raised during a special session of Tsongkhak Sogdo in Bumtang. According to the local government rules and regulation 2012, the Geok administration officers under the supervision of GUPS have to administer the civil servants posted in the Geoks. However, everything to do with money, like monthly salary, allowances and trainings, are looked after by the Zonkak administration. They should either be completely under the Zonkak administration, since the Zonkak takes care of everything, or give full financial powers to the Geok administration. If it is taken care of by the Gyok administration, it will be very helpful for us to plan any activities in the Gyok. The Uragab also said that the candidates contesting for a seat in the parliament receives 130,000 from each as a campaign fund. But for the candidates in local government election, they have to spend from their own pockets, which they say is not fair. The Geok leaders also said each Geok should have an engineer. It is not mentioned in the local government act that a Geok should have an engineer, but it needs to be taken into consideration that an engineer is very important for the Geok. It is a huge problem with no engineers in the Geoks, especially for the remote Geoks. The meeting decided that all these issues will be submitted in the upcoming parliament session. Compile for Komal Kharka, Namgyongchu, PBS News. The rice meal at Chuzegang Geok and Sarpong Zonkha was taken over by the Food Corporation of Bhutan on Sunday. This has left the Kafko members unhappy. Kafko is a farmer's cooperative in Chuzegang Geok. At a ceremony on Sunday, the rice mill was taken over by the FCV from CAFCO, the farmers' cooperative in Chuzagang Gyok. The move comes after an agreement was signed between the Ministry of Agriculture and Forests and the Food Corporation of Bhutan. As per the agreement, FCB will operate the mill for a period of five years. The move, however, was not welcomed by the CAFCO members who have been operating the mill for the last three years. <laughs> Our main income was from the rice mill. We have operated it for a few years, but it is taken over by FCV now. I don't know why it is taken over. Did we fail? 
It will be difficult for us now because Kefco being a cooperative, we need budget and we have 220 members to whom we need to pay share dividend. Our profit margin will definitely go down. We don't have any other alternative but to hand over. We cannot say whether we can run the mill good or the FCB will do better than us. It was government's property, so we had to give it back. The Food Corporation of Bhutan said the rice mill was taken over because CAFCO was not able to market on a large scale. The government also has other plans to establish other mills in Tirang, Bajo and Samdup Choling in Samdup Jonkar. Looking at the record, they didn't buy more. They bought about five to six metric tons and the members said they couldn't buy in bulk because of budget constraint. We feel we can do better because FCB facility is in all 20 Zongkaks providing service for years. Not only rice, we will also take over maize or doma whenever there is huge production in all 205 gyaoks. The FCB also has other plans for the farmers like establishing collection point, interest-free loan facility and grocery credit policy that can be repaid after the harvest. Ugin Chodup said it will also help the government to become self-reliant and benefit the farmers at large. Kefco benefited us. Firstly, with AMC's support, Kefco gave machinery to the people and later on collected paddy as hiring charge for the machinery. Now having taken over by FCV, which is comparatively bigger than Kefco, we hope benefit will also increase. The mill has the capacity to produce one and a half metric tons of rice per hour. Chuzagang produces more than 15 varieties of rice. Ishari Gurung, BBS News, Gilefu. Bhutan Agriculture and Food Regulatory Authority, BAFRA, officials in Funsuling suspended licenses of two hotels and seized goods for failing to comply with the Food Act of Bhutan 2005. The inspection, which began since March 6, saw suspension of licenses of two hotels for not complying with the Food Act of Bhutan 2005. Similarly, goods with expired date and without labels in English were also seized from both wholesalers and retailers. According to Bafra officials, mostly local products like bread, biscuits and dry meat pickle come without labels. Since there is no label on the product, I would not know how to consume it. But if there's a level, then there will be a directions for the consumption. As per the Bafra rule, the leveling must include the ingredients, manufacturing details, and expiry date of the product. In case of processed foods, Bafra officials seize those that had its containers tinted. They said people should refrain from consuming processed food if its containers are dented because it is health hazardous. There is a coating inside every container. So if the can is severely dented, then the coating peels off and gets into the food inside. And these are processed foods, which means it can be consumed directly. So when the coating, which is a chemical, peels off, it reacts with the food and this can be health hazardous. In case of restaurants and hotels, they said most did not have food handling license issued by Bafra. As per the rule, every restaurant or hotel must have at least one employee holding such a license. For those without such license, Bafra officials have asked them to register with the office for obtaining one. Till date, Bafra issued more than 100 receipts to grocery shops and restaurants for not complying with their rules. For the seized goods, officials said it will be disposed as per the rule in consultation with the Trondi office. Kampal Fosunamandi, Sherab Zangmo for BBS News. 
121 bikers took part in 90 kilometers Dantak open mountain bike race. It was flagged off by Her Royal Highness Princess Sonam Dishan Wangchuk in the capital. The race began from Chang Limitang. Racers had to ride to Bondi in Paro and then back. The race saw 14 female cyclists. The youngest participant was 13 and the oldest was 57. Just two and a half hours after the race was flagged off, Tom Hornyblow from Australia crossed the finish line first. Tom is a volunteer teacher with the Australian Volunteers Initiative for Development. He received 50,000 neutrum. And the, the Bhutanese riders that I rode with were very tough opponents. I tried to shake off two riders in particular, um, two Bhutanese local riders, and I just could not get them off my wheel. Every, every hill we got to, I tried to inflict a little bit more uh, pain on them so that I could take the lead, but they were always with me, and so I, I never took it for granted that I would uh, cross the line first. <laughs> Just a minute behind Tom was Sonam, last year's winner. He won 30,000 neutrum. Jigmi Tenzin came third, a minute behind Sonam. Jigmi took home 10,000 neutrum. Rika Yoshi from Japan dominated other women participants completing the race in three hours and five minutes. She was the winner of the international marathon in Punaka as well. The 26-year-old teacher took home a cash prize of 40,000 neutron. I, I ride bicycling every day, every morning. Go to Gel, to Palo. Yeah, very happy. Thank you so much. Imi Tsukamoto, also from Japan, came second, finishing the race in 3 hours and 36 minutes, winning a cash prize of 20,000 neutron. Ishidema came third. She received 10,000 neutron. Ishi finished the race in 3 hours and 40 minutes. The event was organized as part of Dantak's 53rd Raising Day celebrations. Tenzin Rapke, BBS News. Well, that is all we have for you this week. Join us next week again for yet another edition of Bhutan This Week. Until then, have a great evening.